Hi, and welcome. Thanks for joining me. I'm Jennifer Britton. I'm the author of Plan, Do, Track, Coaching Business Builder, and Effective Virtual Conversations. If you've never met me before, thanks for dropping in. This is one of several semi-weekly community calls that I host for my community, whether you're here live or virtually, which is really the day, today's reality. I like to hold the space for a focus on some of the themes and key issues which have emerged in the current context as it relates to the work that I've done. So today we're lasering in into a call which I said a few months ago, it was supposed to be entitled sort of like productivity tips for 2020. So I've reframed it as back to the basics, productivity in a remote space. And I'm actually, I've gone back to an earlier plan do track call, which I hosted early in 2019. The world has changed, but as plan do track and coaching business builder came out a few years ago, um, it was interesting. So Plan Do Track is a workbook planner for virtual remote professionals. It consists of about 125 pages of focus on several areas. So let me just take you into it because it really is, I think, a resource that you will find, an analog resource, not a digital resource, but an analog resource that you might find useful as you step into Q4 or 2021. The whole premise of this is that in work, in remote work especially, we do need to get into the notion of daily steps and consistent action to create momentum. As the world has seen this year, it's very much about keeping our focus, making sure that we are even just moving the needle a little bit every day. If you are a mom or parent like I am, certainly it's you know critical. There's not a lot of time in my world I'm also a caretaker and supporter to my parents who are in their mid eighties and I run a vibrant business between my clients, between my family, between other things. There's not a lot of time, but I do know that every day there is space for me to eke out a little bit of time on those most important projects. A lot of people say, Jen, you are so prolific. Like I've never met a writer who is so like prolific. And I have about five manuscripts that hopefully in the next few months will be coming out in some way, shape or form. Really, I love to write. It's part of my service to the world, part of connecting in with people. And we know certainly in the remote space, we're all hungry, not only for more information, but also connection. So I spend a lot of the time that I do have leading live group calls. So today we're going to zoom into actually not the planner. The planner is the last half of both Plan Do Track, which is geared for virtual remote professionals. It includes planning pages. It includes, um, you know, monthly to do's. This is actually my own planner. You can just see some of the examples. One of my favorites, and I would say some of my clients' favorites, are the monthly daily trackers, getting you to actually spell out what you've done. So depending on where you are, again, you might have trackers that look like this or trackers that are numeric in size. T today, we're gonna go into like, really, what does your planning look like? Last week, I did a call on Q4 planning. If you haven't watched that, I'd invite you to actually listen in. It helps you take stock of your Q3 and look forward at your Q4. Today, I'm leveraging off of this question I asked back in early part of 2019. What do your plans look like? And given that the world uh, is continuing to be more remote in nature, not fully remote, but recent statistics show that a lot of places are staying more in place. And so with this, here's a quote that I've pulled from Plan Do Track. Our vision pulls us through the choppy and sometimes turbulent waters of business and life key to success, key to productivity is having a clear vision. In the last several months, I've been invited to speak with a lot of organizations, teams, individuals, associations, specifically either around having virtual conversations or thriving in uncertain environments. As many of you know, I worked for many years, 15 years almost with the global sector. I was um, living and working and leading programming out of Central and South America, the Caribbean, and for a lesser extent, out of Europe. With the teams that I supported in the United Nations and other international bodies, including the British and Canadian aid sector, my staff were really on the front lines of a lot of changes that were happening in the world. As a leader, I was also having to work through complexity like nothing we could have seen or nothing I was trained to have seen. 
things like hurricanes, volcanic action. Um, you know, today we have the pandemic. And I think this is really an example of how turbulence is part of the norm. Now, one of the tools we have available to us is clarifying our vision. And in today's call, I'm not gonna be going through that. In fact, some of my upcoming work around the remote guide for professionals is gonna get more into vision. But I would invite you, if you do an annual vision, pick it up again. And I'm looking over here, I have an, um, a notebook that I keep every year, every month with my vision. I review it once a month. I do it at the beginning of the year. And it is a way to keep us anchored. So what are you wanting to create? What is that big picture? And while the details and the pathway to getting to it might have changed, chances are it really may have moved a little further than you think. One last thing I wanna leave you with with vision is that that really helps us maintain some stability. If we look too close at that turbulent water, what happens? We get seasick. But if we can really look out at the horizon, that's where things can be reframed and get into a different type of perspective. As I said back uh, in the Teams 365 Leadership Lab a couple of years ago, without a clear vision, it's hard where to know, where you want to go. And in that call at the beginning of last year, I left you with some questions like, what have your successes been? I want you to actually think about, it's the end of this year, so we'll say it's December 31st, 2020. What have your successes been? What has your focus been? What products or services have you been focusing on or offering? Who have you been working with? What's been happening? What have you taken a stand for? What have you become known for? What have been some of the major milestones and what goals have you achieved? If you're listening in on demand, which is the bulk majority of you, I'd invite you to stop and pause this. Otherwise, note these questions and next time that you're journaling, take five, 10 minutes to freestyle it. Just put on a timer. You might be interested to see how fast or slow time goes. As Seneca wrote years ago in ancient Greece, without a clear vision, it's hard to know where to go. With him in his writing, it was really about without knowledge of what port you're aiming at, you will never get there. So regardless of the analogy, having a clear vision pulls us forward, especially through turbulent times. Perhaps you're also looking at your annual vision. And if you haven't done this recently, it's always good to pull out your annual vision and see what's on it. So this comes from Plan Do Track, and at, there's annual planning tools, quarterly planning tools, and then also our other monthly planning tools. So here is my planner for 2020. 2019, I did it in Coaching Business Builder. I haven't actually sat down at any point to look at the two, but if you are using a similar system, you can go back and you can see what did you have in common between your first year, and your second year. I think it is important for us to have elements where we can track ourselves. So my theme for this year of 2020, it has been twofold. It's been to scale. It's also been to be a beacon for virtual and remote work. And I set out a vision earlier this year to be connecting directly and indirectly 795,000 people in the virtual and remote space have a pretty big financial goal, which is a really 10x of where I've been. Interestingly enough, my book sales have gone up 10 times in the last six months, and actually different revenue streams are also going up. I have some product and program goals, marketing goals, including ease and flow, viral and visible. And one of the things that I've been loving doing is five-day challenges, which are pretty hot, pretty interesting in the the um, entrepreneurial space, it is a way to start thinking about how you want to get your word out in meaningful vehicles. So as you look back at your annual vision, if you haven't got one, set one now. Why not set it from Q4 to Q4, 2020 to 2021? Think about where you want to be 12 months from now. Financial goals, client goals, product goals, lifestyle goals, projects, offers, um, marketing, or other, and under my goals, my other goals, I have a set around content, and I also have a set around writing. So whatever you are focusing on, think about your areas. And again, if you want a copy of this, head on over to the Potentials Realized Store or Amazon and pick up a copy. You can get an analog copy at Amazon, Plan Do Track. You could also pick up a digital copy at our Potentials Realized Store, and it's not available 
on Amazon. So as you consider your annual plan, what is linked to vision? Go back, do another layer on this and see how those connect. Area two, once you've done this, you then wanna think about what are your priorities? Again, in the remote space, we're now working in our bu bubbles. We have our own context, sometimes which we are not looking up to see around. And what are your top three priorities? I would say for me in the end of Q4, I've got five priorities, but the top three really are one, to get some writing projects out the door. And I'm moving the needle on those every day. Two, I'm launching a new program in a few weeks. That will be done and be clear. And then another one is to make sure that we've got our 2021 programming full. Again, the Remote Pathways podcast is continuing to grow and excel. If you haven't heard me there, do listen in. I'll have a Remote Pathways lab happening in 2021. I'll also be doing a 2021 mastermind for coaches who are wanting to scale their work virtually. Another big part of my work is gonna be the standout virtually. So that's another uh, priority, not only doing this week's practice, but also doing some others. So think about your vision, um, what is important, think about your top three priorities, and also make sure that you're weaving that backwards into your weekly planning. I have made a um, sort of a practice, let me call it a practice in the last six months at least, of doing a lot of my weekly planning on a Sunday. That might not be for everyone, you might do it first thing Monday morning, but what I found most of this summer, I've been running groups starting at 9, 10, and then I have this call at 10.30, I have another call at 11, I have a call today at 12.30, and on and on. If I did not take the time on Sunday, it wouldn't be happening because Mondays are my really heavy, one of my heavy group days, as are Friday. As Johann Wolfgang van Gogh wrote, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. What are those things, those big rocks that you want to make sure you keep visible and keep present? They should not only show up in your annual plan, but you'll want to make sure that they are showing up in your monthly plan. So here's another tool in Plan View Track. You've got your month in focus. And every week you can note down what your key priorities are, what the key successes are, enablers, derailers, and lessons learned. I know people who actually also bring this into your Sunday night plan. So that's part of Plan Do Track and Coaching Business Builder. Again, they're sister companions. So they are pretty similar, a little bit different because this is for coaches and this is for remote professionals. Area three, I wanna get you thinking about systematize. So as you prioritize, that's gonna help us really look at what then is, is key. The third area that I was talking about beginning of last year was systematize. And systems are key. Like the hand on the tree, they are going to support us. So think about your sales and marketing, your products and programs, your client outreach, your financial, and your communication. And it is really important that you are able to note what are the systems that are going to help you replicate, duplicate. In the remote space for productivity, systems are key. If I'm doing one thing here in Toronto, and my co-host for my Remote Pathways podcast is doing another in North Carolina, and we're not using the same system, it's going to break down. We learned early on in our work that we've got to have templates and processes. I might just share a little bit. It's not in my fingertips, but, you know, we use a lot of charts. We also make sure that we have systems that either she can send out or I can send out. It's not something we're iterating every time. It's something that is really emerging. So think about the systems that are going to help you with your products, your programs, your client outreach, finances, as well as communication. As W. Edwards Deming, who's well known for his work in the area of quality insurance said, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. So he's all about process improvement. So while you might not be thinking about developing systems in each area, what is the system that you can take people through? Think about the sales and marketing, the product and program, the finances, the communication. What needs to start when and how do you scale that? What do you have in place? What needs adjustment and what's going to expand them? I wanna give you a minute right now just to take some notes. I've had a bit of an aha uh, actually around systematizing my client uh, challenge work. 
So I want to capture that and just take a note. All right. Fourth area is circadian rhythm. You've probably heard me talk about this before, but uh, it's been enshrined in even more recent writing, books like Daniel Pink's When. The circadian rhythm has been studied for several decades now, and it really is this notion that we all have a time of day that helps us thrive and when we are at our best. What time are you at your best? Here's what Simon Fokard says in When. Perhaps the main conclusion to be drawn from studies on the effect of time of day on performance is that the best time of day to perform a particular task depends on the nature of that task. So think about when you're at your best. You might want to check out the Munich Chronotype Questionnaire to learn more about that. Personally, I like to get up and be ready at the crack of dawn. I love to get going, even on weekends. And that's that works because I'm not a night owl. Sometimes I do sleep in, but you know, I really like to like get things done. I know that if I don't typically get the important things off my list early on, as the time I move into group calls or writing, the day is done. You also want to think about when are you needing to focus the most? When do you have to focus the most? Perhaps that in times of the pandemic is, you know, when are family members available? One of the other reasons why I work so early is because I like to be able to spend time with my son when he first gets up in the morning. So I work for a few hours, then wake him up. We have some breakfast together. He heads off to school virtually or physically right now. In the fall, he's doing both, it's just different days. And then uh, we both get to work around 8 a.m. So take a look at your schedule and what is important for you. Do you want to be working a little later, working a little earlier? Remember, time in does not equal always productive time. Are you planning? Are you having a system to notice what is important? And with that, here, you know, you will want to make sure that you are focusing. So a couple of other interesting things that are uh, came to be. So Daniel Pink notes in his book, When, People born in the fall and winter are more likely to be a lark. People born in the spring or summer are more likely to be owls. And in my family, I'm the only one born in the fall. I love to get up. Uh, the others in the family are night owls because they are born in the spring and summer. Whether or not that's anecdotal or not, Daniel Pink, thank you. I hadn't noticed this one before. Daniel Pink also continues on, moods are an internal state, but they have an external impact. Try as we might to conceal our emotions, they inevitably leak, and that shapes how others respond to our words and actions. Moods are key, and it's been interesting. In recent weeks, I've had a lot of people say, I really love your energy, and I think it's because I am a summer, spring, summer, and fall person. As we get into the depths of winter, it might be a little bit harder. At when are you at your best? Take a moment, note this down, and... Our final tip for today is also to get you thinking about your three bullet points. What's important? What are the things that you want to communicate? And how can you do that in a very succinct way? Productivity has as a major lever communication. How much time are you spending on communication right now? Would it be better to pick up a phone and have a conversation than send 50 emails? Or is there a way that you can do that virtually or other? With the three to five bullet points, that's a practice you can have every day by setting your top three to five goals. It may be something that you wanna start planning around in the week. Again, going back to plan, do, track and having your weekly focus. Maybe your key priorities that laid out here, if you do a Sunday night planning, make sure that it's in your plan, do, track as well. And that way, at the end of the year, it's all there. Or as you go to planning, which will be happening in about a month's time, here at Plan Do Track. So Blaise Pascal wrote, I've made this longer than usual because I have not had time to make it shorter. It is important that we communicate and learn and tighten things up. Think about an activity that you have coming up. Maybe it's a presentation or a marketing message. What are the key points you want to communicate and what do you want to get across? How can you then shorten it, make it more succinct? 
think about that presentation and think about the top three bullet points you want people to remember. Rewrite them and insert them now. And I think that's about it. So where to go, Plan Do Track Coaching Business Builder. You can definitely check out the ecosystem, which is section four, the keys for productivity, getting into action, focus, experimentation and reflective pause, as well as motivation. I would say that those are the four quarterly themes that we've been looking at this year at the Remote Pathways pro, uh, Guide. As you think about your annual plan, what is absolutely essential? We have limited time in the week. What do you want to get done? I hope that you found some value today. Please join us online. I have now have, I'm now the host of the Virtual and Remote Visionaries Hub. So whether you're coming at it from the coaching lens, productivity, or just virtual and remote work, do join us there. And I'll look forward to being back together again in two weeks. No call this next week because I'll be celebrating Canadian Thanksgiving. And with that, everyone, thanks for spending time today. Have a good one. I hope that this has been of use. Let us know in the comments what you've enjoyed. See you soon. Bye-bye.